Hello everyone, this is your friend Jitendra Pant and I am back with another video. In this video, I will be talking about literally everything that you need to know about GRE, Graduate Record Examination. And there is a reason I wanted to make this video, this video is very dear to me. Guys, I faced many problems when I was applying abroad for higher education. I come from a very small place, it's called Ramnagar, it's a very small town based in Uttarakhand and hence there was nobody to guide me how to apply for these tests and I don't want you to feel the same frustration and that is why I made this video for you so watch GRE stands for graduate record examination it is a standard test conducted by ETS also known as educational testing service based in US and it is one of the foremost requirement for graduate admission in the United States. GRE revised test features questions that would reflect the kind of thinking that is required in a graduate school or in a business school or in any other higher education setting. GRE revised test contains three sections. First one is verbal reasoning, second one is quantitative reasoning and third one is analytical writing. Verbal reasoning and quantitative reasoning are measured on a scale of 130 to 170 which means the lowest that you can score on these sections is a score of 130 and the highest that you can score in these sections is a score of 170. Analytical writing is measured on a scale of 0 to 6. Verbal reasoning evaluates different components of a statement the interpretation, the logical interpretation drawn from a statement and the relationship between the concepts in a statement. On the other hand, quantitative reasoning evaluates the basic problem solving ability by using the concepts of algebra, arithmetic, geometry and data analysis. And the final section, analytical writing measures your ability to think critically, to think logically and to see whether you have the ability to articulate a complex idea and draw logical conclusions from it effectively. In addition to GRE general test, there is also something called GRE subject test which is not a common requirement in most of the schools but it can definitely help you to get your profile boosted in the case when you don't have extensive work experience or you don't have publications or you think that you have a lower GPA. GRE subject test is more common in European countries. In my personal opinion, you don't need to apply for a GRE subject test until or unless the graduate schools ask for it specifically. Some of you might want to know if GRE is mandatory to get admission in any institutes in the United States. The answer is no. There are very handful institutes that do not require you to take GRE tests. But in my personal opinion, you must take GRE if you are planning to come to United States. The reason is, what if you come to United States and you realize that the course that you are taking, that the institute that you are studying in is not up to your expectation and you want to change school. You will be left with very few options. Another important reason that you should take graduate record examination is because during your visa procedure, it is going to greatly help you. Your GRE score is going to greatly help help you also the institutes that require GRE are one of the best institutes in the United States getting an admission in those institutes in a way confirms your visa to United States it should be noted that there are many institutes in Australia and Canada where GRE is not a mandatory requirement there are many institutes in Europe where GRE is not a mandatory requirement if you do not want to spend your money on GRE test or if you do not wish to particularly study abroad in United States, you do not have to take GRE. There are other countries where you can apply. I get this question from a lot of students who contact me through different forums, who contact me on Facebook, on LinkedIn and ask me 
what is a good GRE score? In my humble opinion, in my personal opinion, there is no good answer to it. It depends. You should note that GRE is not the only requirement to secure an admission in the graduate school. There are many other important factors that would help you to secure a position in graduate school. What are these factors? These factors are your CV, your personal profile, your recommendation letter, your statement of purpose, your work experience and your ability to crack the interview. But to give you a general idea, I think that a score between 310 to 340 is good enough for you to land in a good school given that rest of your credentials are very very strong. Does this mean that if you have a score between 300 to 310 then you should write a GRE test again? Personally speaking from my point of view from my experience I don't think you should rewrite your GRE just because you have got a score between 300 and 310 you should make sure that your recommendation letters are very very strong if you have work experience highlight it if you have internship experience or training experience in a lab please highlight it make sure that your statement of purpose is very strong if your grades are good you should be able to secure an admission even if you have a score between 300 and 310 but again guys it is it depends on case to case basis you have to be hitting the right university with the other good credentials in order to secure an admission with a score between 300 and 310 but if your dream schools clearly has a cutoff in past few years which is far above 310 then in that case you should reapply for a GRE test from my personal experience I have also seen that the requirement for GRE score for a master program are slightly higher than the requirement for a PhD program. The reason being PhD programs are not just about your courses. It involves a lot of research. It involves a lot of work ethics and it also has interview as one of the very crucial criteria of selection and hence the PhD candidates are not just evaluated for their GRE score. I have also seen that a lot of times with a very very low GRE score some students have been selected in a school. This is particularly true for cases when a PhD student has secured admission by emailing or personally contacting a PhD advisor. The funding for these PhD students mainly comes from the advisor's grant fundings and that is why if a professor has accepted you in his or her laboratory chances are that the university is going to accept you as well i have put a list of some of the best books that you can study from in order to get a very good gre score but regardless of the book that you are referring to your preparation is incomplete if you have not studied the official gre book by ets and i'm very serious about this guys no matter what book you are referring to, no matter what coaching center that you are seeking help from, no matter which friend is helping you, your GRE preparation is incomplete if you have not at least once completed the entire GRE prep book by ETS. The best way to get a good GRE score is to practice, practice and practice. And the best way to practice is to give mock test. It is two, three months of hard work that is going to pay off a very long way. Guys, in my personal opinion, I believe if you are not serious about your dream, if you are not crazy about your dream, you don't have a dream at all. You have to understand that this two, three months of hard work is going to change your life forever. So why not put the hard work into it? Make sure that you give at least one GRE mock test, at least one GRE online test in a week. This will help you to understand the actual GRE exam. Also, when you are preparing for the mock test, when you are giving the mock test, make sure that you keep the environment as real as it can be. By which I mean, do not eat during your GRE mock test. Do not drink during your GRE mock test. Do not use the washroom during your GRE test. Do not pick up the phone during your mock GRE test. 
lock yourselves in a room tell your parents or your friends not to enter the room unless you are done with the test it is four hour of lengthy test that you are going to give in an actual GRE center so why not keep the preparation in the same way you are going to realize that a lot of people who do not prepare in this particular manner undergo a lot of stress during the actual GRE test day. <music> Question that I get from a lot of students is do you still need to write TOEFL or GRE if you have good score in verbal or analytical writing section in GRE? The answer is yes. You have to understand that GRE and TOEFL or IELTS they serve two different purposes. GRE is a test of your reasoning ability whereas TOEFL or IELTS is an evaluation of your ability to read, write, listen or speak English well. Since they serve two different purposes, yes you have to still give IELTS or TOEFL in addition to GRE. Please note that there are very very few exceptions to this. There are certain universities particularly in Europe that would not require you to write TOEFL or IELTS if you have good verbal section score in GRE test. What else can you do to boost up your GRE score? Guys, drink GRE, eat GRE, sleep GRE. As I said earlier, there are few things that you can do to boost up your GRE score and this is where you can make the best use of your smartphone. Install and download apps such as Magoosh, Princeton Review in your phone and make sure that whenever you have free time, whenever you are in a group wasting time with your friends or whenever you are wasting time on social media, you instead spend time on your smartphone and use these app. I had personally used Magoosh GRE Prep app and it was very very helpful for me. A lot of people will advise you that you should read newspaper, you should watch English movies in order to boost up your verbal reasoning score. In my personal opinion, if you are not already good in English, it is too late for you to pick up or learn English by watching English movies or reading English newspapers. The best way to boost up your score in verbal reasoning section is by preparing these mock tests as much as you can by using these uh, smartphone application as much as you can and by reading the course material as much as you can. You have to also understand that by reading newspaper or watching movie you might not be actually preparing for the words that are particular to GRE score whereas these books have a comprehensive list of words that reappear over and over again in GRE test and hence referring to these books would be more helpful to you. But you have to also not neglect your CV, also do not neglect your statement of purpose also known as SOP, also do not neglect your recommendation letters, they play a very very important role in, in your admission procedure and if you have work experience whether it is in lab or you have worked as an intern in a company or you have an actual full time experience in a company or in a lab, make sure that you highlight it over and over again in your CV and in your SOP and in your recommendation letter in order to boost your chances. If you like this video, if you are new to this channel, please make sure that you subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to get instant notification.